Welcome back to Home Built Workshop. This video is requested by all of you guys. I'm gonna polish the top of my slab coffee table. So first I need to say thank you to those of you that requested this project. I've waited about two weeks for the finish to cure on this and now I'm gonna get this buffed out. So if you're gonna do it using this process, this method that I use, a few things you're gonna need. First, and mainly a random orbit sander. I'm gonna do most of the work with the random orbit sander. You're gonna need some wet dry sandpaper. I have 2000 grit wet dry sandpaper that's Velcro backed. That way I can attach it to my random orbit sander. You're also gonna need some sort of a buffer. You could use a conventional uh, buffer, like a 12 inch buffer with a cotton buff on it. It would work just fine. I have one of those. But the RPMs are really high and you gotta be really careful with it. Mine's an older one, it's not a variable speed, so I'm not super comfortable using it. I like the random orbit sander a lot better. And to be able to polish with the random orbit sander, you need some kind of a buffing pad. What I have here are some SureBuff Velcro-backed buffing pads. It's a microfiber buffing pad. They work really well. Stick it on the random orbit sander, and it works great. You need a spray bottle with just some plain old water in it so you can do your wet sanding with the water. And lastly, you need some kind of a polish. I've just got some polish here that I picked up at the auto parts store. Um, there's some other brands that I like a little bit better, um, but those are more available at like an automotive paint store or something like that. This one works just fine. So what are we trying to achieve? Well, the finish is very glossy and it looks really good right now, but if I run my hand over it, I can feel some little bumps little dirt, who knows what's in there. We're gonna remove all that so this thing is smooth as glass. First thing I'll do, we'll get the 2000 grit paper onto the random orbit sander, and we're just gonna spray down the top with water. One concern you may have is with spraying water all over your piece of wood. Normally you think water and wood, yeah, not really a good combination, but Remember, this piece is already finished. It's completely sealed with several coats of polyurethane. So I'm not worried about spraying a little bit of water on the top. Again, we're not soaking the piece in the pond or anything like that. We're just spraying some water on the top. In my experience, not gonna cause you a problem. And now we'll just start sanding away with that 2000 grit. Now you can speed up the process by using a thousand grit or, or some of the coarser wet dry papers. I really don't want to risk burning through the finish, so I'm just going to start right with 2000. I'm okay if it takes me a few extra minutes of sanding rather than ruining the finish and having to redo it. As you start sanding, you're going to end up with somewhat of a slurry of finish mixed into the water. That's okay. It means you're getting in there and the finish is actually being sanded away. You start to feel the sander slow down, drag a little bit. Usually that means it's starting to get a little dry and you need to get some more water on there. I'll stop in between sanding, wipe it off, take a look and see how the progress is going along. And I can start to see some dull spots where the grain is a little bit higher. And that's perfect. That's, what, that's exactly what we're looking for. We'll just spray it down again and keep sanding. And make sure you keep moving. You don't have to go super, super fast but definitely don't stay in the same place for too long. I usually try not to sand for too long without checking the progress. If you just sand away for a long time, you could very well sand through the clear and into your wood. Now I can really start to see the high spots and the low spots. And if I run my hand across it, the number of little points of dirt or whatever in the finish significantly less than when I started. I still feel some little bumps around this edge right here. I know I need to hit that a little bit more. Pretty much all the way around that edge. Pretty much around all the edges I still feel some, probably because I'm being a little bit cautious with getting next into those edges. In the center, it's pretty smooth. 
So I'm going to give it another pass. Trying to hit those edges a little bit more. Be careful of the corners. It's really easy to burn through on a corner because you know the corners just don't have as much finish on it because it tends to run off. It doesn't build well on the corners. So just be really careful. Keep your sander flat, whether you're sanding it by hand or with the sander. Also, keep an eye on your sandpaper. Make sure it doesn't get all built up with crud. Any little bits of finish that build up in there can be putting scratches all through your clear. It's really smooth. Really smooth. I can still feel a little bit of the grain in there. In order to avoid that, I'd probably have to put another 10 coats of clear on there. It's already got about 15 on there. That's another thing. If you're going to do this, make sure you have enough clear. Don't put one or two coats on there and then think you can buff it out. Because I'm pretty sure you're going to sand right through it. And this one's got like 15 coats on the top. So I feel pretty confident as long as I'm not sanding on it for hours, it's gonna be fine. Now, you could just leave it alone just like it is. You wouldn't necessarily have to polish it. It's got a kind of a satin kind of look on it. And it, it looks fine. It's nice and smooth. Top still protected with the clear. It's very smooth, but it's not what we're going for. We want this sucker to shine. Now we need to polish it. We'll just take our Sure Buff Pad Velcro side. Stick it right to the sander. Now these things are really cool. You can use them for, you can buff your car with it. You can buff wooden projects, pretty much anything that you need to polish. You can use these pads for and your random orbit sander. So that makes them really versatile and really handy to have around. Make sure whatever your polish you're using, if it needs to be shaken up, make sure you shake it. You don't want to take any chances here. This is the last step we're going to be done. We'll take a little bit of that polish, squirt it right on the pad. They usually start out, smear it around a little bit, and fire it up and start buffing. When you're buffing, it's important, again, not to stay in the same spot. You want to keep moving. You don't have to go 100 miles an hour across your piece with it, but definitely keep the thing moving. Try to cover all the surface area evenly. Now what you'll see initially is the surface gets almost a little bit hazy looking as it starts to spread out the compound. Don't worry if it doesn't look quite right as soon as you start. It's going to take it a minute before the polish starts getting a good shine on there. Just keep on going. Eventually, as you keep going, you'll see the shine start to come out. And that's when you know you're getting somewhere. Once you're all done polishing, take a good clean rag, dry, and just go through and kind of bring that final shine in by hand. Because you're still going to have a little bit of that residue polishing compound left on there. Even though it looks like it's nice and glossy, Get in there with a rag and finish it up. Then you don't have to put a ton of elbow grease in it, but you can feel you can feel on there where there's still some compound. You'll feel just a little bit of resistance. A couple of wipes with a rag. I try to go in a circle motion. You'll feel that grit come off of there. The residue will go away and you'll see that shine come right out. Even more so than it did when you were polishing it. You can see that's got a shine on it. I've used this process on several projects. A couple of them being guitars that I've done. And it works really well. I've not ran into any issues. Now let's say while you were wet sanding you burned through the clear and you need to go back and fix that. How do you do that? Well, since you're sanding it with a thousand or two thousand grit sandpaper, that's really too high a grit to be putting new clear over with. So if something like that happened, I would sand it back down to probably a 220. Start over, reapply your finish, wait for the finish to cure. 
Don't try to put a finish over something sanded down to a thousand or two thousand grit. There's just nothing for the finish to stick to there. It's getting so smooth. You gotta have a little bit of grit in there. Like a 220 or maybe even a 320, something like that. Sand it back again using that grit. Reapply your finish like you did originally. Another thing to keep in mind is you have to wait until your finish is completely cured before you do this process. The reason is because you want to make sure the finish is completely dry and as hard as it's going to get. You don't want to try to sand on it while maybe it's still a little bit soft. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's dry to the touch. A good rule of thumb that I use is if you can smell it, it hasn't cured yet. I brought this in the house a couple of days after I put on the last coat of poly. And when I couldn't smell it anymore, that's when I know I'm ready to go. To me, that's a good indication that everything's dried, all the gases have come out, it is completely done doing whatever it's gonna do. It's, it's as hard as it's gonna get, and now is a good time to start sanding. So, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Again, thank you to those of you that requested this video. I'm ready to get this table into use now. So if you have any other questions that maybe I didn't answer or something I didn't explain well enough, please go ahead and give me a comment down below and I will definitely help you answer those questions. So thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to click that subscribe button to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any episodes. Also, you can follow me on social media. I'll put all the links down there below in the description. You can look me up on any of those social networks. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.